Hello, great souls. Welcome back to this channel. Today we're going to be focusing on the fundamental counting principle, part two. And today we're going to be looking closely at the factorial notation. The factorial notation. So, before I introduce to you the factorial notation, I just want to explain this scenario. Let's say, for instance, you have uh, 20, we have 20 people, and we want to arrange these people in a row. Obviously, we'll need 20 seats. So, we want to calculate the, the number of different ways in which those 20 people can be arranged in those seats. So obviously, one can do this manually by actually putting people in different positions and actually calculate this is the first way, second way, third way, fourth way, and so on. But if you notice, it's going to take us a long, long time to actually determine the total number of different arrangements that we can make or the total number of different arrangements that those people can sit in those 20 seats. So mathematicians have actually discovered that you no, know, the manual process is very long. Let's let's come with a device that will actually help us to calculate those total number of different arrangements that can be made in a simplest and shortest way, other than us going to do it manually, maybe to arrange objects, to arrange people in different positions, calculate it. This is the first way, second way, third way, to actually determine the total number of different ways that we can arrange people. So they introduced something called the factorial notation the factorial notation. So I hope now you get an idea of what the factorial notation is. So the factorial notation is denoted by um, the symbol, this symbol. It's actually an exclamation mark in English, but this symbol it's, it's used to represent factorial notation. Let me just write it here so that you may see it clearly. So it says the factorial denoted by that symbol of n is the product of the natural numbers less than and equal to n. In simple terms, we use the factorial notation to determine the total number of different arrangements of our objects or people, even sometimes letters or passcodes. If we want to determine the total number of different in, in which we can arrange those things uh, we're going to use the factorial notation. It's actually the simplest thing, other than us going to do it manually to arrange things, place it in different position and calculating. We use the factorial notation. So how do we do this? For example, if we want to arrange N items, actually, or N objects, sometimes N letters, or actually N people, so n represent the number, a natural number of those things. So if we want to arrange n items, n objects, n letters, or n people, other than us going to arrange them and calculate uh, manually, we're going to use the factorial notation. That's why maths was designed, to make things simple. So how are we going to do this? The total number of different arrangements of n items or n objects or n letters or n people will be equal to n factorial. So we simply say n factorial. And what does this mean? This is the product of the natural numbers that are less or equals to n. So we'll simply say n factorial will be equal to n multiplied by we reduce those numbers by one. So we we'll multiply by n minus one. We reduce by one up to so multiply n minus two times n minus three up until we multiply till we reach one. So the product will always end with one, always. So we reduce those number of items up until we reach one. So we multiply those products. So that's the meaning of n factorial. So they also say here, n factorial refers to the number of different ways of arranging n items. Sometimes might be required to arrange objects, 
letters, people in different positions or in different seats. So we 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 are gonna get our factorial notation on our calculator. So to get our factorial notation on the calculator, step number one, you press shift, then step number two, you press this button here. It's x exponent minus n, and you can see, if I can try to zoom um, this picture properly, you can see that there, there is x factorial on top of that button. So immediately when you press shift, let me just do this, yes. Immediately when you press shift and you press that button, a factorial symbol will appear there. All right, let us now explore different examples in order for you to understand the concept of factorial notation. So the first question, it says, in how many different ways can two people be arranged in a row? So let, let me make a row. This is my row. And I have two people. Let me just put two people. These are my two people that I want to arrange. So in how many different ways can these two people be arranged if they are to be seated in a row? So to do that manually, we can actually say this is the first arrangement. So the second arrangement, we can start with this girl here and the boy sit here. So this is actually the second arrangement. So in total, there are two different arrangements that can be made. So there are two different arrangements that we can make. So we did that manually, but now we no longer do it manually. Let us use factorial notation to actually determine the total number of different ways in which these two people can be seated in a row. Let me just delete this. All right, because we have two people to be arranged, according to the factorial notation, if we have to arrange n items, then the total number of different ways to arrange those items would be n factorial. So we have two people that we want to arrange. Because there are two, then the total number of arrangements that can be made will be two factorial. This is equal to the total number of arrangements. So remember that we get two factorial is the same as two multiplied by we reduce by one up until we reach one. Remember the product ends when there is one. So we reduce that number up until we reach one. Then we multiply those products, but we end at one. So two times one will be two arrangements that can be made. So you can see that the factorial notation is a very useful and simplified tool that can actually help us to determine the total number of different arrangements that we can make. Other than us going to do it manually as we did here and calculate, okay, there are two ways. We can simply use the factorial notation to actually give us the answer in the most simplest and shortest way. Let us move and explore other examples. They are saying, how many different ways can you arrange seven items? So we know in order to arrange seven items, the total number of different ways to arrange them will be seven factorial. We'll actually use the calculator to determine this answer. So you press seven and you press shift and you press this button. So it will actually show you seven factorial. So when I press seven factorial, it's gonna give me 50. 40. So this is 5,040 ways, 5,040 ways, different ways in which we can arrange these seven items. So you can see if you were to arrange these seven different items, use, arranging them manually, you are, you are actually going to spend a lot of time trying to calculate different arrangements, placing them in different positions so that you may get to this point of reaching 5,040 ways. So it was going to be very difficult. So factorial notation simplifies these things. Let's now look at a number B. How many different ways can you arrange eight items? To arrange eight items, we're gonna say, we're gonna arrange them in eight factorial ways. 
So remember, this is the same as 8 multiplied by, we reduce by 1, 7, multiplied by 6, multiplied by 5, multiplied by 4, multiplied by 3, multiplied by 2, multiplied by 1. Remember, the product always end when there is 1. So when we do this in our calculator, we're going to just press 8 factorial. Let me turn back to my calculator here. So we're going to press our button 8 and we press shift and this button here. So it will actually show us at 8 factorial, which will give us 4320. So there is 40,000. All right, let me just return back here. So there is 40,320 different arrangements, different ways in which we can arrange eight items. Let us now explore another way of using factorial notation with some restrictions. Consider the letters of the word dead. How many different arrangements of the letters can be made? All right. So we need to arrange the letters of the word dead. OK, we're going to count the number of items we need to arrange, the number of letters that need to be arranged. OK, let me just write this letter here, dead. Dead has one, two, three letters. So we want to arrange three letters. And most of the people will actually run to say, OK, because we need to arrange three uh, letters, we got just going to say three factorial. But now, this is not the case in this case. This is because the letters of the word dead has some letters that are repeating. Remember, we only say n factorial when all these n items are all different then it will give us the total number of arrangements of those different n, n, n items. But then in this case, we have three letters to be arranged, but we can see that these two Ds are the same. So we actually use um, a different approach. But in order for you to understand this different approach that we use, let me just do this manually so that you can see the total number of arrangements that we can make for these letters that were dead. Okay, the letters of the word dead can be arranged in this way, just as it is written. So this is the first way to arrange those letters. Someone can say, can start with A and D, D. Then this is the second way in which we can arrange the letters of the word dead. The third way can be, um, we start with the Ds and we end with A. This is the third way we can arrange the letters of the word dead. So in total, there are only three ways to arrange the letters of the word dead. Okay, let us use factorial notation to actually get this answer. So because we have three letters, where two of them are similar, the total number of arrangements of these letters, because we have three letters to arrange, one, two, three, it's going to be three factorial. But because two of the letters are repeating, we have to remove them from this arrangement so that we can be left with the total number of different, remember, different arrangements that we can make. So we are actually going to remove these repeating letters. And how do we do that? We divide by the factorial number of those repeating letters. So because two of the letters are repeating, D are repeating two times, so we're going to divide by two factorial. Why do we do this? We want to cancel out the effect of those repeating letters so that we can be left with the total number of arrangement of different objects, I mean, of different letters. So basically what you do if you are given a letter, of, uh, if you are given a letter and they say determine the total number of arrangement, you count how many letters are there to be arranged, one, two, three. If they are repeating letters, you divide by the factorial notation of those repeating letters. So it's going to be 3 factorial divided by 2 factorial. Remember, 3 factorial is the same as 3 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 1. Remember, the product ends in 1. We just reduce by 1 up until we reach 1. Divide by 2 factorial is the same as 2 times 1. So these 2s will cancel 
and we left with three ways, just as we got when we did that manually. Now, let us look at this last example. In how many, uh, how many different arrangements can be made if repeated or similar letters are treated as different? Remember, we are considering the letters of the word there. They're saying how many different arrangements can be made if these repeated or similar letters, we are treating them as different. It means to show that these are repeating or, 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 I mean, similar letters are different, we're going to just write D1 and D2 to show that those Ds are not the same. They are now different. So it's going to be very simple. You just count how many things are there to be arranged. How many letters? One, two, three. So the answer will be three factorial, which is the same as three times two times one. This is six ways. In this case, notice that we didn't divide by two factorial because these repeating letters were treated as different. So these um, satisfy what uh, we call factorial notation. Remember, just to revise, factorial notation help us to get the number of different ways of arranging n. Let me just put n different items. n different items. Just like in this example, we had to arrange three letters, and repeated letters were treated as different. So it's just going to be three factorial. We don't divide by two factorial because now these letters are no longer repeated, but they are treated as different. So the total number of ways will just be three factorial. This will give us six ways. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell in order to be notified when I upload more videos. Thank you.